Florida's fourth estate. An unfiltered take on an unfiltered state. Mondays and Fridays at 5.30. Live with ClickOrlando.com and streaming on News 6 Plus. This is News 6 at 5 a.m. Getting results. Breaking news overnight. A massive law enforcement response in Orlando. A busy intersection near I-4 surrounded by crime scene tape as investigators appear to pick up shell casings along the road. The latest on this scene, that's coming up next. And a week of wild weather, large hail pelting parts of central Florida, causing damage to homes and businesses. We'll show you the best videos sent to us by viewers. Candace. And we are looking at a big severe threat again for today. Between 1 to 5, our category will be about a 2 with that slight risk for all of central Florida. Throughout the day, it will be a 1-2 punch, so make sure you're planning accordingly. All right, thank you, Candice. Good morning, Central Florida. You're watching News 6, getting results. I'm Jerry Askin. Let's get right to that breaking news out of Orlando, where police are responding to reports of a possible shooting. This happening along Formosa Avenue. That's right off of Fairbanks Avenue next to I-4. The call came in around 1.30 this morning. A video shows a big scene outside of a convenience store. You see it there. You can see the parking lot and road completely blocked off with crime scene tape. There also appears to be a vehicle on the grass under the I-4 overpass surrounded by officers. We saw at least one person placed into an emergency vehicle. At this point, Orlando police have not yet confirmed this to be a shooting. But as we find out more, of course, we'll let you know right here on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. A wild scene there. It was a rough week of weather for several spots in central Florida. Back-to-back -back severe storms brought damaging wind and incredible hail storms. Um, some New 6 viewers sent us these videos. On the left is how it looked in Lake County on Tuesday. Golf ball-sized hail came, came down, smacking cars and even breaking some windows. And now on the right, and this is in Marion County, the town of Anthony was one of those places that reported hail as big as baseball this week. And unfortunately, this weekend brings more risks for severe mm. weather. Meteorologist Candace Campos in for Jonathan this morning. And Candace, what can we expect this time? Good morning, Jerry. We are again in at slight risk. So basically from stages one to five, we're about a two for today, as we are going to see still another good chance of hail, damaging winds, lightning, rain, you name it, even the possibility of some of those supercells developing even a rotating storm. So let's get to it, give you an idea of what's going on. I know a lot of people have some big time Saturday plans. So when it comes to our hail potential, we're talking a little less than what we saw over the week. We're talking about a one inch, so about a quarter size, uh, like at the coin, a quarter size um, size of hailstone there. Damaging winds, we're talking 60 plus straight line winds. We had official reports in Brevard County that caused some big time damage uh, just because of straight line winds. No official tornado uh, confirmation there. But for today, it's going to be almost two rounds. The first one will come kind of early in the afternoon between about two and four o'clock with the sea breeze uh, driven storms. But then late in the day, we're going to watch another squall line. It's not going to be the main front just yet, but it is going to be packing a punch. So again, all of Central Florida under that slight risk for severe weather. And the main threats are going to be obviously heavy rain and lightning, but still elevated will be damaging winds and large hail. Again, that uh, one inch sized hailstone with, of course, that mention of tornadoes. So before I toss back to you, Jerry, I just wanted to show you here. This is the future cast, the clouds and rain forecast, still showing a relatively dry start to the day. So if you have baseball games, soccer games, practices, whatever you need to get done, or you just want to go out and enjoy your Saturday morning, maybe have breakfast outside, you should be good to go. It is going to be muggy, but we are going to start watching those showers and some pretty strong thunderstorms developing by about 4 o'clock. After that, the weather gets very rough. We'll be pinpointing more on that coming up in just a few minutes, Sherry. Candace, thank you. We'll see you back in a few minutes. And now is a pretty good time to download our free News 6 Pinpoint Weather app. You can always keep up with the forecast. And when severe weather is in your area, simply search WKMG in your app store. We showed you that intense hail slamming parts of Central Florida this week, and now we're seeing an uptick in insurance claims. We'll show you why some drivers who have coverage may still end up paying out-of-pocket costs for repairs. New 6's Troy Campbell will have that part of the story at the bottom of the hour. Now to Tallahassee, where a bill allowing Governor Ron DeSantis to keep his job if he runs for president has just one more hurdle before becoming law. Uh, the measure revises what's known as Florida's resign to run law. Current law requires candidates seeking higher office to give up their post if their term runs together. 
Well, the bill aims to exempt candidates for president or vice president from the law. DeSantis has not officially declared he is running for president, but he is widely expected to do so after the current legislative session, which ends next Friday. And that is not the only bill headed to the governor's desk. A controversial measure adding new restrictions on how you register to vote could soon become law. New 6's Brian Ditlake has that story. All right, Brian, thank you. This month, Governor Ron DeSantis signed several high-profile bills into law. Yesterday, while on a trip to Israel, he signed a bill increasing penalties for hate crimes like anti-Semitism. He also signed a bill eliminating unanimous jury recommendations before judges can impose death sentences. And a bill banning most abortions in the state after six weeks was signed into law earlier this month. At the beginning of this month, he signed a bill eliminating the permitting process to carry a concealed weapon. To learn more about what's being signed and what's still being discussed, head to our website, clickorlando.com, and click Florida in the drop-down menu. Well, big changes on the horizon for downtown Orlando bars and restaurants. Here's a live look from our light Orlando camera over downtown Orlando. On Monday, all businesses cannot sell alcohol after midnight without a special use permit. Uh, the new rule is among a list of changes recently approved by the city to boost safety in the downtown entertainment district. Uh, 60 bars or establishments applied for the permit, allowing them to serve alcohol until 2 a.m. But as of Friday, only 28 have been approved. The vice president of the Orlando Hospitality Alliance says some delays are coming from businesses needing to pull records that could be years old. It's not only detrimental, it's devastating to these businesses for them to not be able to be open after midnight next weekend for Cinco de Mayo, and it's truly all week long. Many of these businesses have invested thousands and thousands of dollars to get ready for this weekend. Monica McCowan there, she owns several bars downtown, manages rather. Establishments also have to meet a number of safety requirements, including added law enforcement protection, scanning all patrons entering after 10 p.m., wanding if the occupancy is more than 50 people, uh, ID scanners, and they have to keep count of everyone inside after 10 p.m. Moving now to Brevard County, where a man is behind bars after police say he led them on a high-speed chase right past the school. Uh, police say 25-year-old Jamarian Moreland was easily going over 100 miles per hour after speeding from a traffic stop. Uh, police say surveillance video from a business on Easter Boulevard shows Moreland approaching Kennedy Middle School as children were just getting out of class, getting to class, rather. According to an affidavit, police yelled at kids to get back as they close the crosswalks. Easy to clear the intersection. We have a pursuit of a white Kia heading your way. Okay, I got it. Scary for those kids there. The chase finally ending when police says officers used their cars to pin Moreland's Kia in place as he nearly got on an on-ramp into oncoming traffic. No kids were hurt, but police say the two officers who pinned Moreland suffered minor injuries and shoulder pain. Moreland was booked into jail on no bond. Well, this morning, News 6 is walking for a great cause. The 12th annual Pulse for Peace Walk in Orlando benefits domestic violence survivors and their pets. Uh, Trooper Steve will emcee the event from 8 until 11 this morning at Blue Jacket Park in Orlando. It's a short walk for pets and their families with music, dog-friendly activities, and vendors. Uh, last week, our Pulse for Peace phone bank raised more than $7,000 in just a few hours. The money helps fund the Pulse for Peace uh, kennel, along, uh, allowing domestic violence survivors to make sure pets aren't left in harm's way. All right, SpaceX getting one rocket off the ground from the Space Coast. A Falcon 9 left the launch pad at Cape Canaveral carrying broadband internet satellites built by Boeing. Then about nine minutes later, a successful touchdown on a drone barge in the Atlantic. That was the 20th launch of the year on the Space Coast. The same could not be said for the company's Falcon Heavy rocket. Less than a minute before liftoff, SpaceX aborted the launch but didn't say why. Overnight, SpaceX updated the new launch time to Sunday night. They pointed to the possibility of severe weather on the coast tonight as for the reason 
Liftoff Sunday now set for 729 p.m. All right, 511 this Saturday morning. Candace Campo standing by in our Pinpoint Accurate Weather Center. And Candace, we're looking at more possible severe weather today, you mentioned, right? Yeah, rocket scientists, they know their weather too out there because <laughs> we are going to see another round of pretty nasty, severe weather in the forecast. I know some areas haven't seen much in the way of rain, just a few scattered showers. Count your blessings because some areas have continued to get pummeled with severe weather. So for this weekend, it's going to be quite active, not only for today, but for your Sunday as well. The good news is if you're heading out the door in the next couple of minutes to go to the pause for peace walk, you are good to go. We're looking dry between 9 and 11. Don't worry, Trooper Steve has been hassling me about that weather forecast. We're going to be great. Looking here at the satellite and radar composite, we are looking mostly dry, mostly clear at this hour, but we're going to be watching East Coast sea breeze. That's going to start firing up across our afternoon uh, sea breezes throughout the day. Then we're going to see another pulse of moisture. Some of it can be strong throughout the evening. And then a front comes in on Sunday. We're going to be pinpointing everything hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes, Jerry. All right, Candice, thank you. Coming up, the return of a popular annual event in one local city. How Leesburg Bike Fest could impact you even if you don't plan to attend. You're watching News 6, getting results for all of Central Florida on air, and our News 6 mobile app will be right back. At News 6, we bring you local news every night. But what happens when you add the plus? That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in the plus. News 6 Plus. Weekdays at 5.30. Live, this is News 6 Mornings. Getting results. Welcome back to News 6 Mornings. We're following breaking news out of Orlando where police are responding to reports of a shooting. Formosa Avenue at I-4 surrounded by crime scene tape around 1.30 this morning. At least one person was taken away in an ambulance. We're asking police for more information and we'll let you know on our News 6 mobile app on your smartphone. For the first time since the pandemic, the city of Leesburg is hosting its first full bike fest. Thousands of bikers are expected and business owners are preparing to cash in. New 6's Emily McLeod has how the city is preparing. Emily's and, a smart cookie to oh download yeah. the Pinpoint Weather app. Candice Campos joining us now <laughs> in for Jonathan this morning. And how will the weather be for the bike fest? I mean, oh, severe weather, you said, huh? Not great. <laughs> if you're watching us and you really want to go to the Leesburg bike fest, yeah. Go now, not now, but go early in like the day. Like at 5 a.m., Candace? Yeah, or, so basically, let me tell you, you know, I'm not going to be the bearer of bad news. Mm -hmm. You're good till about, let's say, 1. You're pushing it about 2 o'clock for you guys there in Lake County. Then the weather's going to get pretty nasty throughout the late Saturday, early Sunday. But after about 10 a.m. on Sunday, you'll be good to go. So there is hope. There is the chance for you to be able to get out there and enjoy it. And I know there's so many people having some big plans this weekend, big or little. You want to ha have a nice dry day. It won't be that case. So everybody in Central Florida, I don't have to show you the map. Every county in Central Florida is under a slight risk of severe weather. What that means is we will see sc scattered severe thunderstorms, a couple of those supercells. We've seen plenty of it this week that could produce about a quarter sized hail hailstones there, wind damage upwards about 60 miles per hour, and we cannot rule out the risk of an isolated tornado. Latest model runs, I'm kind of looking at how the atmosphere is going to be stacked up today. It looks like the highest threat for tornadoes will be once again for you guys along the coastline. A couple days ago, we had four or five dueling tornado warnings at the same time. I don't think it's going to be that widespread, but don't be surprised if we do pop a fast tornado warning later on tonight and early tomorrow morning. All right, stormy weekend timeline for your Saturday. The storms will be developing at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon from west to east. They will linger late, especially along our coastline, until about 9 o'clock tonight. Then come Sunday, it's going to be a busy morning for me and you, Jerry, this, uh, on Sunday morning as a cold front will be driving right through and that's going to be driving so those early thunderstorms some strong to severe by 4 a.m. tomorrow morning but overall the severe weather threat will be higher today 
but still there will be that risk again for your Sunday. This is where your Sunday front currently sits right now over Texas, but we are going to watch that big pulse of moisture, some storms back into the forecast for this afternoon. So let's look here at the clouds and rain forecast. You can see we're looking dry for the most part till about one, two o'clock in the afternoon. And then we'll start to see that West Coast sea breeze firing up about 430, still looking good along the coast until about five, six o'clock. Everything pushes and then gets pinned right along the coastline. That's where we could see the rotating storm by about six o'clock every all the worst of the weather should be pushing out by eight nine o'clock but then look what happens as we head into your saturday morning uh should say sorry sunday morning another line of very strong storms starting about 4 a.m for our northern zones and lingering till about eight o'clock for our southern half it's going to be kind of a wild wet couple days at least the next 24 hours and then we'll dial back those rain chances now let's check on that hour by hour forecast for today on top of the severe storms another hot day nearing 88 degrees and it's getting results here with a full seven day forecast. Temperatures are still going to be in the upper 80s, but look how beautiful. Once we get out of all that nasty weather today and tomorrow, a really nice setup as we head into next week. And I think I can say, speak for the entire weather team, I'll really appreciate a Monday weather forecast. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure you all send us your pictures and you download been, our New 6 weather app. They've been doing fantastic. So again, pin it on our New 6 Pinpoint weather app. Yes. That's right, Candice. Thank you. And still ahead, keeping up with record volume at Port Canaveral, the price tag for a proposed expansion of cruise terminals and how soon it could happen. But first, get those tickets out. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Florida lottery drawings. Good luck. Welcome back and happy Saturday. Business is booming at Port Canaveral with millions of travelers taking cruises in just the past six months. Now, port officials are looking to expand by building a new terminal. The project is years away, but already has a price tag of more than $170 million. New 6's James Barbero has a look at the plans. James, thank you. Coming up on News 6 Mornings, the U.S. Army grounding all aircrafts. The safety review now underway after a series of deadly crashes. And breaking overnight, a major law enforcement scene in Orlando. The details we're working to get from investigators. Coming up next, Candace. And another kind of weather alert kind of day here as we are anticipating another round of some pretty nasty weather, supercells that could produce heavy rain, lightning, but also another round of large hail, damaging winds, and even the risk of tornado. Who has the highest threat? And what's the timing so you can plan out your weekend without having to deal with the rain with those plans coming up in just a few minutes? Keeping us posted, Candace. Thank you. You're watching News 6, getting results. We'll be right back. This is News 6 Mornings, getting results. Right now on News 6 Mornings, ice ripping through screens and smashing windows. A recap of this week's wild weather and the uptick in insurance claims in Central Florida. And it's not over. And storms are back in the forecast for all of Central Florida. Candace Campos is here pinpointing the threat for today and how this weather could inconvenience your Saturday. But first, breaking news. Good morning, Central Florida. I'm Jerry Askin. Police are responding to reports of a possible shooting this morning. Uh, it's happening along Formosa Avenue. That's right off of Fairbanks Avenue next to I-4. The call came in around 1.30 this morning. Video shows a big scene outside of a convenience store. You see it there. Uh, the parking lot and road completely blocked off with crime scene tape. There also appears to be a vehicle on the grass under the I-4 overpass surrounded by officers. We also saw at least one person loaded into an ambulance. At this point, Orlando police have not yet confirmed this to be a shooting. But as we find out more, of course, we'll keep you posted on News 6 and our website, clickorlando.com. Now we want to get to our Saturday forecast. Meteorologist Candace Campos is in for Jonathan. And Candace, we are looking at another chance for severe weather in our area, you yeah. said, right? Staying weather aware, keeping your eyes to the sky and your pinpoint weather app in your pocket as we are going to be seeing another round of some pretty nasty weather. Right now, it is a muggy 
kind of start to the day. We are looking dry though. Right now we're in the 70s. Now we're going to continue to heat up to near 90 degrees today. And that's really going to destabilize our atmosphere all ahead of what a big time cold front will be bringing in on Sunday. All right, so let's take it step by step here. So for your Saturday, we're going to see those storms develop at about two o'clock from west to east. They will get pinned along the coastline once again as that collision really kind of sets in. And they will linger late until about eight, nine o'clock. Then on Sunday, this is going to be an early storm event on Sunday as a cold front will be driving in those early morning storms by about 4 a.m. Now there will still be a threat for severe weather both Saturday and Sunday. The highest threat though will be today after about three, maybe four o'clock. That's why we are all under that severe, slight severe weather threat across central Florida, indicating about an inch sized hail, 60 mile per hour wind gusts certainly will be a good chance of that. Guaranteed to see heavy rain and lightning and even the risk of an isolated spin-up storm, especially under some of those stronger supercells. And I'm really focusing along our coastline once again for today as that's where that sea breeze will collide. We have that dueling wind. So, of course, we're going to be pinpointing that as well as a look at your hour-by-hour -hour forecast. That way you can really plan out your day as this weather will be impacting you in many ways coming up in just a few minutes. Oh, it definitely will. Candace. thank you. We'll see you in a few minutes. And here's some video, incredible video shared by New 6 viewers this past week. Over in Lake County, Groveland was covered with ice you see the size of golf balls. And here's what it was like in the panhandle yesterday. Strong wind from a front blasting cars and homes with hail. That looks wild there. Those big hail stones did a number on vehicles all across Central Florida. And as New 6's Troy Campbell found out, car insurance claims in our area are spiking. All right, Troy, thank you. Developing this morning, 55 Florida churches are leaving the Florida Conference of United Methodist Church over LGBTQ issues. Uh, Pine Council United Methodist in Orange County was granted the right to leave the denomination on June 1st. It has already changed its name to Bell Owl Community Church. Some congregations are concerned the United Methodist Church may soon condone gay marriage and gay ministers. Our current church doctrine says homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. In our area, congregations in Ocala, Delion Springs, Deland, DeBerry, Tavares, Claremont, and Orlando are now leaving the United Methodist Church. And new this morning, a big move from the U.S. Army. All non-essential aircrafts are grounded. The military branch ordered a complete safety review after the latest accident during a training flight. CBS's David Martin reports it was the third fatal chopper crash this year. Hmm. In Osceola County, a Kissimmee Road is still closed this morning, almost 24 hours after a water main break opened up a hole and caused the truck to get stuck. At least 90 clients of Toho Water Authority are impacted by this. When Sky 6 arrived yesterday, crews were filling up the hole with dirt and asphalt. The hole actually swallowed the wheel of a pickup truck on the corner of Den John Lane and Aquatic Center. Several businesses and subdivisions nearby are under a water boil advisory. In Orlando, the biblical walls of the Holy Land experience are coming down. The attraction along I-4 in Orange County closed back in 2021. We could see crews out there um, yesterday tearing down portions of the old theme park. Avent Health um, bought the land for roughly $32 million. Holy Land first opened in Orlando back in 2001. Avent Health says it plans to build a new emergency room and opening date has not been announced. It is 539 this Saturday morning. Meteorologist Candace Campos in for Jonathan pinpointing another inconvenient weather day, you said, right? Oh, yeah, it's going to be impacting you in several ways. If you mm -hmm. have any outdoor plans before, let's say the lunchtime hour before 12, 1 o'clock, you should be good. It's still going to be warm. It's still going to be muggy, but that slight risk does start moving into the forecast after about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So let's look at what that means for us. All of Central Florida is highlighted in that slight risk there. Scattered severe thunderstorms. A couple of those supercells could cause a spin up. An isolated spin up, primarily along our coast, is looking like the highest threat for now. But hail at about one inch or smaller, and wind gust damage still upwards about 60 miles per hour. So our Air a little higher ab above the surface is not as cold. It's cold enough and the weather is unstable enough that we could create those hailstones again, just not as big as what Jerry was showing you in the top of the hour there. So where you live by three o'clock today, I do want to show you it's going to be a hot Saturday, even with the rain in the forecast. Temperatures are showing, uh, models are showing that we could be nearing 90 degrees in some spots. That's really going to destabilize our atmosphere, hence why we had that slight risk of severe weather. We pinpointing the timing again after the lunchtime hour 
is where things start to get a little more rowdy on the radar coming up in just a few minutes, Jerry. All right, Candace, thank you. And still ahead, an Orange County High School student getting a big surprise and making history, scoring a full ride to an Ivy League college. I sat down with him and his mom about the people who pushed him to reach his dreams. Jamie. The NFL draft drama continues. The Miami Dolphins joined the party last night. They go with a couple of guys from the SEC. The Jaguars go all offense, and the Bucks go with players on both sides of the ball. Meanwhile, Apopka native Jalen Carter joining the Eagles in Philly yesterday, and he gave a shout-out to his alma mater. The draft and much more coming up next. Let's make the news easier for you. News 6 is streaming. Download the News 6 app and start streaming now. Live with Amanda Castro and meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. This is News 6 at 5 a.m. Getting results. Welcome back. One Jones High School senior is all smiles this morning. He's making history as the first athlete at Jones to attend an Ivy League and get a full ride. I sat down with Xavier Rivera and his mom and talked about his bright future ahead. You know, he really has a bright future oh ahead. Gosh. And he wants to work for NASA or Lockheed Martin building spacecrafts, he told me. He can 4. do 9 it. 4.9 GPA, he's well on his way. 4.9? I didn't even know it went up that high. Exactly. No, <laughs> it's awesome. That is so great for him. So congratulations. That's right. How's the weather looking today? Uh, if you're going to go play some football, do it early this morning <laughs> as uh, rain chances will go up. Not only rain, we're not talking just kind of inconvenient stuff. It kind of comes in. Everyone has to get out of the pool and then wait and then come back out. And it's not going to be exactly like that. Now, it's not going to be a washout by any means, but the weather is going to get pretty intense pretty quickly after about 4 o'clock. So let's look here at the satellite and radar composite. We're still looking dry, mostly clear, warm, muggy start to our day. But we are going to be watching the collision one of the East Coast Sea Breeze. That's going to start up that action after about 3, 4 o'clock. And then we have this little thing. We call it, uh, it's basically a little mesoscale complex that's going to continue to make its way into central Florida. And that's going to continue to add that lift and that juice to create another round of strong to severe storms. So it's going to be kind of a two-pack punch here in the forecast for your Saturday and another round as that main front out over Texas finally clears our area by Sunday morning. So it's going to be an active afternoon and evening Saturday and a busy Sunday morning. So strong storm impacts. Severe weather will be expected for everyone in central Florida. Heavy rain, lightning, strong winds, upwards about 50, 60 miles per hour. Hail still in the moderate range. Although the tornado risk is low, we can't rule out the chance of seeing a, one of those supercells cause and kind of that spin in the atmosphere. We saw a lot of that happen about two days ago. Um, so again, that could be a possibility, especially along our coastline as those scattered showers and thunderstorms kind of get pinned there along our coast. So let's look here at the clouds and rain future cast. Again, we're good till about three, four o'clock. Then that's when the action starts moving in along that west coast sea breeze. It collides with the east coast across I-4 to I-95 at about four or five o'clock this evening. We could see pockets of those very strong to severe storms possibly a supercell, but look at all the other action that's going to be moving in from the Gulf. That's that big ball of moisture I just showed you out there with the Gulf. All that will continue to stream in, bring in another round of uh, possibility of strong storms at 7 o'clock in the evening for our western zones while at the same time, the coastline is still dealing with those strong storms from the afternoon. All of this will continue to push offshore. We'll have a slight lull throughout the overnight, and then by 4 or 5 o'clock, I'll be here. We'll be pinpointing another round, but this is that cold front that will be moving through throughout the early morning hours. So morning, uh, Sunday morning services could be impacted greatly by about 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Scattered showers lingering and then clearing by about 10. And then the rest of your Sunday... It's looking great. So again, here is the, the basic breakdown. So for your Saturday, storms develop after 2 o'clock, lingering till about 9. Then on Sunday, it's going to be early morning storms starting by about 4 a.m. Severe, severe weather threat will be high for both. The highest threat, though, will be your Saturday. Now let's check on that hour-by-hour hour forecast. Before the rain comes in, it's going to get hot. 88 degrees will be your high, running well above where we should be. Your rain coverage, obviously high at 70%. Now let's get results here with the full 7-day forecast. Again, two days. It's about 24 hours of some nasty weather in the forecast. The once that front clears, though, I'm ready for it. Bring me a nice, stable couple of days in the weather forecast. Yeah, please. Jonathan's off and UConn with the cold and the bad weather. Come yeah, on, Candace. I know. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The cooler weather will be nice, though, on Monday. You'll be thanking That's me right. by then, I promise. Candace, thank you. Sure. Jamie Say is here now with your morning sports.
Pin it your best moments now when you download our newly updated new 6 app. You might even catch your pins live on ClickOrlando.com. Just search WKMG in your app store today. Welcome back. A school in central Georgia is giving its students the tools they need to manage money in the future. We all can use that. Right now, kids as young as fourth grade are learning how to buy and sell on the stock market. It's part of a class offered at John R. Lewis Elementary School in Macon, Georgia. Students use the website called the Stock Market Game, which allows them to stimulate trading online. So when they first started, they just started buying anything and everything. But as we progressed, they looked at, okay, this stock did good today, but let's look at what they did for three months. This is really what you want to look at. Buy 84%. That's how you really want to buy your stocks and know it's really good. That is good. In the fall, lessons will be expanded to learn more topics like dividends, which I would have learned that more when I was a kid. That's awesome there. Here's a check at what's coming up in the next hour on News 6 Mornings. Ice, the size of baseballs, will show you the wild weather and the videos you sent in to News 6. And breaking overnight, we're working to get more information on this major scene in Orlando, the area surrounded by crime scene tape just ahead. Another hour of news and weather is coming up right here on News 6. Thanks for waking up with us. We're back in just three minutes.